Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us. Today is January 3rd, 2024. Today's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Treasury is at 72.0 million. Um, the AUM is at 515.8 million. And we are staked at 77.63 million. Ed, how are you doing? Happy New Year. I'm doing same to you, Josie. Happy New Year. Uh, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm doing well. Thanks. Where'd you spend uh, midnight on New Year's Eve? On my sofa. So very exciting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I was on my sofa as well. I was uh, watching a couple of the broadcasts that were, I watched the Nashville one and then they tuned into the ball drop. And then, you know, every hour they went into somewhere around the world. Uh, the world. So I was watching it for five or six hours and this, Chilled at home, really. Nice. Yeah, I think that's the best way to spend New Year's Eve. Yeah, I had a party during the day I went to, and it seems, seems like more people were doing that than going out the night of. They're just waiting until the next day, and you know, it was uh, it was better that way. And the entertainment was pretty good on TV, so no complaints by me. Good New Year, and um, I am ready to start this year up. Sounds good. All right. Uh, happy New Year to everybody. I uh, hope you had a great New Year's Eve. Uh, your happy holiday season was good to you. And now we're back to um, starting things up again. <clears throat> um, 2024, man. Let's do this. We crushed 2023. If you look at all the numbers that we put up in almost every single aspect, we just went through almost everyone in the top 100. And I expect to do that again in this year. I know BT is going to have a lot of stuff planned for us. I'm going to announce a few things as well. I'm not sure. I'm looking to see. He is not logged on yet. So he may still be in the process of moving and doing a lot of stuff. So I'm not sure he may uh, come on today. So hopefully you guys will jump in and uh, share this Twitter spaces with me so we can uh, not let me just do all the talking. As we get in this new year, I want you guys to do whatever it takes, like you've been doing all year last year, help out the community, help that each one teach one, get focused. First thing you need to do probably is get organized with whoever you're going to be doing this year. You know, do the, the simple little things. I'm not talking about your personal life and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about your crypto. Um, you know, like go through your Telegram and, you know, look at all the chats you're attached to. Maybe start removing them and leaving some of them and, and just cleaning things out a little bit making things a little bit easier for you to access. Maybe you haven't been in a chat in like six months, you know, just get rid of some of those things that you're not part of anymore, just to make your telegram um, account look a little bit cleaner. Make sure your settings are all fixed, protect yourself as much as you can. And, you know, also do some stuff for us, which is do the biggest free marketing you can do. Add the elephant money, um, animal or just put em put elephant money in your name on telegram it's free marketing and it's the easiest thing you can do if you're on there quite a bit if this is your first time listening to us uh welcome to elephant money we do these every single week we give away an nft and we just sit and talk about elephant update people on what's going on with our ecosystem tell them a little about our ecosystem and sometimes we just talk about some random things that have nothing to do with elephant at all we just like to have a little fun and just have a good time each week. And if you are listening to this later, because we record this, some of you are able to just take the content, repost it so it could be listened to later, give it to your people that are all subscribed to your channels. That will help us out quite a bit, getting the word out. This is our each one teach one year. Uh, you don't need to bring somebody in every single day, but maybe set some goals for yourself as maybe I can at least talk to one person a month, you know, 12 people doing all of that for everybody, that's a lot of people. So, you know, start small and then work your way up there with at least a goal of getting at least one person, not into elephant, but maybe just tell them about it and see what they think. There's a lot of people out there that are gonna take this new year. A lot of people like to use a calendar date to start things, to motivate themselves, to set goals, to change things in their life. And this is a good time to ask some people, you know what, how much money did you make last year? Did you look at your 401k, uh, your 401, 401k account last year? Were you happy with it? You think you could have done better? Or maybe they weren't invested in anything at all. And they say this year, you know what? I do need to start saving some money and not just saving, but by saving, maybe making some money at the same time while it's sitting there. 
That's your chance for the each one teach one. Their life, they want to do something different this year. So teach them about elephant and teach them how it can work for them for the next 365 days. Uh, maybe you can budget it yourself a little bit more. Maybe you weren't able to do like a bi-weekly redeposit into futures. Maybe it was taking you three weeks or a month. Maybe you can just organize yourself and rebudget yourself to where you have a couple extra bucks to where you can increase your deposit into futures or maybe save a little bit more money to buy an NFT or fill up your bag with elephant money a little bit more. Um, BNB has been looking really, really good. I mean, it's been moving a lot. And just today alone, it was started at like 312, went up to 333, and then it was back down to 314. And we're going to expect that. I expect BNB to have a very, very good year. But a lot of people have been accumulating, and they're going to be taking some of the profits. So you may see a bit of movement going on with BNB, but I expect it to have a very, very good year compared to all of the big um, tokens out there. So keep an eye on it. See what you want to do. Plan yourself. Get yourself organized. And you know what? I think you're going to have a successful year. And as a community, we got to work together. We always teach the each one teach one. But this is where we all do our best to step it up a tiny bit. And the best way to do that is to just help each other out. If you've been getting people in, tell us out. Post it in the main chat. That's what our telegram is about. That elephant money telegram is the only telegram we have. Just to let everybody know out there, in case somebody asked, do you have an airdrop one? No. Do you have a elephant money support channel? No. We only have this channel and this is it. You can also send them to discord where we have multiple channels. I think we got about 14 multiple languages. We have a help. We have a FUD channel where you can have a little fun. We have an info channel. Uh, I know crypto TN has been helping out quite a bit on there. So if you ever have any questions, know where your question goes. So not only can it get answered quickly for you, but it can also keep the chat consistent and specific to the topic that it is. Um, the Telegram one is mainly for our promoting and marketing, which is why I said, hey, if you have some tips or tricks that you've been using that have really worked with bringing people in or actually having people just ask more questions, we would love to hear about it because we can always use ideas when we're talking to people to help them get into elephant money. So feel free, whether you make content or you just want to type something up, that's, that's fine. Any way you want to do it, that's fine. All our content creators, thank you for what you did last year. I cannot wait to see how much work you're going to put into elephant money this year from Chris, from Fly and DeFi, from uh, DeFi Springs to ZOA, to just to everybody that's putting stuff out there. Thank you. I know I can expect to see you plenty more. And Blackberry Guy, he gave you a pretty darn good year every single Friday of updating you on what is going on with everything he has going on in his personal life. He has time to type that out every single week. So that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty much all I want to say, man. I just wanted to motivate you guys and say thank you and happy new year. And I know um, BT finally has gotten in here. So what's up, BT? Hey, happy new year, everybody. How's it going? Can you hear me? Yep, sounds good. Yeah, good, good. Um, I'm still in the middle of a move, uh, uh, but I, I will, at the end of it, I'll have a studio uh, and, you know, dedicated workspace, finally, <laughs> after seven years of basically coding DeFi at dining room tables and kitchenettes. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm really excited about that. Um, all all the stuff out of the old place, and uh, yeah, um, this is going to become, you know, ground zero for 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 what's next, which primarily is, is going to be a lot of social engagement, social activity, working on social uh, media, uh, working on all of our documentation and website. Um, just bringing all the presentation layers up to snuff um, uh, and really setting us up for this bull run. So when somebody lands on elephant money and looks at all of our materials, everything that we produce that we're putting out there um, to promote our 
financial cooperative that it's like, okay, yeah, I see why they have a billion dollars, you know, um, under management and stuff like that. So a, a billion dollars under management is only uh, a two X away, um, which is nothing in crypto, right? So we're going to be there before you know it, guys. And uh, also, uh, we're a multi-billion dollar business by valuation already. So you got you to gotta remember that. Uh, and it's all on chain. Um, you know, when people ask, you know, what's the business model? Uh, we're a store of value. We're a bank, you know, just like just like Bitcoin. Bitcoin has its way of doing it. We have our way of doing it. We have very complex tokenomics that run on smart contract technology. Um, that's, you know, we use a lot of industry standard smart contracts and we use smart contracts that have been invented by me and for whatever reason have not been co-opted yet by others. So, <laughs> so that means that you're early, right? So, um, maybe, maybe 10 years from now, JP Morgan and BlackRock will offer products that look very much like elephant money, but for now you're early. Uh, and this bank is not going anywhere. This will be an institution. Um, this will be just like, you know, some of the oldest banks in some of the biggest cities, uh, the first cities that started in Europe and the U.S. and, you know, China, Hong Kong, all around the world. Um, people still go into work at those places, just like, you know, we'll be doing each one, teach one uh, 10 years from now. So, um very exciting times, you know, everyone should be in position. Uh, if you hold NFTs, you're holding BNB. period, full stop. And with infinite liquidity, <laughs> you know, when, when you live in the Miami, or if you live in, uh, off some ski slopes in Vermont, or I don't know, um, that's prime real estate that no one else can get, you know, and when it goes up for sale, there's always going to be a buyer. That's how the NFTs work without all of the hassle. Um, the only commission is the 30% to Bertha. So you always have access to liquidity when you own an NFT. The, the idea is that you buy an NFT in this current round, you hold it for a couple rounds, uh, and you get the price appreciation from B and B, and you get the um, and you get uh, the price appreciation every time we clear around. Um, and this system is working beautifully. You see that it's working beautifully. We're about to cross the halfway mark with the second round. Um, I'm encouraging everyone. Uh, you know, look at your own situation. But if you're doing, if you're going for the long term investment. Um, and if you're especially trying to just get, you know, get, uh, people who haven't discovered elephant money yet into the protocol, I really would suggest, you know, uh, showing them the NFTs and showing them the elephant chart, uh, and understanding that that's the yield that's getting paid out that parabolic, that super strong asset that's, that's beat most of the market. Um, so uh, I think NFTs are going to continue to do very well. Um, and I think also, you know, folks should focus on, focus on minting. You know, you can buy off the marketplace, but, but focus, but focus also on minting because, uh, you will introduce new black cards into the ecosystem and we're going to have lots of events coming up. So the more black cards we can introduce into the ecosystem, the more healthier it's going to be overall as demand for those black cards increases as we start to announce events. So that's just a heads up for people, um, you know, that are in the NFTs. I think everyone should be in the NFTs. We're super early in, in the NFTs uh, and they just do so many good things for the protocol. They, the, the, the NFTs really, at this point, um, I believe that the NFTs, uh, are represent the future, uh, the present and future of this protocol. Um, um, I believe that in 2024, we can have 
we can demonstrate to the world that we have one of the most profitable um, NFT protocols out there. And um, so I think it's really important for us all to, to row uh, in the same direction there. Uh, the, the, the NFTs um, arguably uh, can provide and have provided, you know, comparable rates of return uh, to futures and elephants, right? Uh, with very low risk. The risk is very low because we have such a strong community uh, and um, we have, you know, infinite liquidity through the marketplace, which is separate from the liquidity in elephant, which becomes really favorable, desirable, um, you know, for us to have um, with the NFTs, uh, no one uh, can call um, elephant money a Ponzi. Uh, with the NFTs, we have a two sided marketplace. We have people who mint NFTs, you know, they pay a, a, fl a flat rate per round. And um, the benefit from doing that is that you receive yield. Um, and, and that's what that looks like on that side of the marketplace. On the other side of the marketplace, you just simply have elephant holders. And the benefit that the elephant holders are receiving is that they're getting a stream, a constant stream of buyer of last resort through Bertha, um, the protocol feeds Bertha, feeds the elephant treasury uh, based on revenue from selling NFTs. And um, those NFT holders, they're, they're, buying, uh, they're buying access to a liquid marketplace, right? Where there are other interested NFT holders, right? And they're receiving in compensation for that, they're receiving yield from Bertha, from the business, from the protocol itself, not from the NF, not from the, not from any other NFT holder, not from any elephant holder. They're receiving that revenue from the protocol itself, from Bertha, from the business that's run on rails and automated. So, um, that's the business. That's the two-sided marketplace. That's where the yield comes from. The yield has always come from Bertha. It has always come from Bertha. Nowhere else. It doesn't come from other users. It comes from Bertha. It comes from the way that the protocol works. The business works. In a business, you sell something. You sell a, a product or a service. You have net profit. You put that in a treasury. You use that treasury to pay out liabilities of any kind. You also use that treasury to pay incentives to other stakeholders in the ecosystem. And so all of that is running on rails. That is a business. NFTs on the front, elephant holders on the back, protocol magic in the middle. Every single thing else that you see is just value add, but the NFTs constitute a fully functioning two-sided marketplace business. Elephant money is not a Ponzi of any sort. There are plenty of NFT projects that are way simpler than this, and no one's calling it a Ponzi. Board Ape Yacht Club, all that stuff. They wish they had what we have. And they probably will co-opt it and adopt it, which is important why you need to promote in 2024 your bags, your business, you know? You, you, you're the first owners on this, like, you know, beachfront property in Miami. You got to get other people to move to Miami. <laughs> so like, you know, it's, it's, it's really simple. Um, there is not one bad thing that anyone can say 
about the NFTs. Think about that. You can't fund the NFTs. They're unfundable. So um, that is the secret sauce. They look great. They look great on your phone. Um, they're easy to share. Um, get to it, guys. Get to it, guys. And, and uh, you know, not financial advice. But, uh, you know, if you're DCA and into futures and stuff like that, that's great. You know, if you if you got it like that, where you're DCA and on a regular basis of futures like that, you know, consider consider, you know, DCA into the NFTs, because the sooner as a community, we market make these NFTs and, and, and basically, you know, you have to think of it as a real estate developer. You're you, you, you bought bare land. You're developing on this land. You got the first, <clears throat> you got the first batch of uh, prime real estate done. You want to get those sold, committed to, and you want to fill those house, those homes, and then you want to go on to the next and build the next set of homes, and the next set of homes, and the next set of homes, and you're doing all of that well before you're flipping those homes. So I see a lot of flipping, and I'm thinking, you know, for all of those NFT resales. You know, we could also be doing fresh mints or those those buyers could have been doing fresh mints as well. So it all works out. You know, we have a liquid marketplace. That's the point. Uh, but uh, giving activity in different parts of the ecosystem, I want us to sort of concentrate or focus on the NFTs because that's what we can easily sell to the masses. And we can do it ahead of time because the NFTs in general are a lagger in this a laggard in the ecosystem. So when you have an NFT that you can show has doubled in price, um, and then uh, quadrupled in price, uh, that becomes very interesting. That's a story that we can tell. Uh, so anyway, that's the f that's that's what I think about unlimited uh, about futures. Uh, futures is just doing its thing. Futures is. Uh, the simplest form of the bank along with Trumpet. And uh, I believe also Trumpet is also along those lines of sort of being unfuddable. At the same time, uh, we want to focus on futures because futures is what uh, pushes the elephant treasury Bertha forward. Uh, and Bertha is doing a great job of, of handling her liabilities, you know. So, and I believe that uh, BNB is going to do well. I think most most top cryptos are going to do well. Um, as much as the U.S. is making a big deal about the Bitcoin ETF, um, ETFs for uh, crypto products uh, have existed globally for a lo for a while now. You know, and more exotic products are already out on the market. So the, the the U.S. is just going to catch up to all of that. And as it catches up, we, we will see uh, significant funds flow into the ecosystem. But in terms of the technology, especially around these ETF integrations that, that that's already existed, you know, by 21, like things like 21 shares, things like that. Um, those, so those 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 choice products will be coming online. They'll, there's going to be a B B and B ETF somewhere in the world, if if not already uh, soon. And there's going to be tons of products that include the top ten uh, in them, so that you can diversify across the top ten cryptos. So um, we're going to do just fine because uh, we are 100% tied to B and B now. Now I did. Um, Going back to the NFTs for one quick second, I did notice that um, in the marketplace, it's still doing arbitrage. It's still buying. Uh, when somebody sells a, a NFT on the marketplace, it looks like it's doing a BUSD buy. So it looks like I didn't update the minter there. I think I might have already done that. I have to check again. But I noticed that that, that was going on. Uh, I think I might have already fixed that um, over the weekend. But, uh, you know, it's been so much. I've been moving. Uh, but... Yeah, uh, we're in great uh, position. So, so getting back to futures, 
um, you know, we successfully migrated from BUSD to BNB. Uh, that's working like a charm. It's using Chainlink for Oracle, so we get the most accurate price uh, um, and use that for inbound and outbound calculations to, to figure out what your cash position is. And your cash position is just, you know, we've done several upgrades to futures. Um, we've tweaked the model, you know, to perfection. Um, we will continue to, you know, use the Dune dashboards uh, and feedback from the community to stay abreast of what's going on in futures and um, make sure that that's uh, running perfectly. Um, one note that I wanted to make while people, while people are on is the BNB reserve is still just like the buffer pool that would, that the BUSD buffer pool that used to exist before. It's just to pay out current liabilities. It collects 10%. Um, I'm using it as a stop gap, uh, health indicator. Not that it's the final health indicator. This thing is, there's this. Futures is on like version eight, you know, there's been that many contracts deployed. Um, and actually these contracts, it'll be much easier to deploy these contracts now because um, there's no approval process because it's just BNB in, BNB in, out. So, you know, when you just refresh the page, you'll get the latest version of futures and be rocking and rolling. So um, the ultimate health of the ecosystem is always Bertha. That's all you have to worry about. And Bertha has always been healthy. Bertha has always been growing because, you know, we have utility uh, that people use on a daily basis. And as we grow the herd, that just compounds. So the most important thing for you to do early 2024 is just to get people on the in the protocol. The easiest way you can do that is just to get them to buy some elephant. We need to increase our elephant holders. Um, and so that, that transitions me to the, to the last, you know, um, to the last, uh, leg in our stool is the elephant token itself. Um, there should be much more voracious buying of elephants. You guys know how this works. Um, the herd, uh, has less coins than Bertha, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't fight <laughs> that, you know, and it doesn't mean you shouldn't trust each other. Um, and it doesn't mean you, you shouldn't be greedy and want to get rich. So, um, you know how this goes, uh, when the LPs get under 100 trillion, things get very interesting and parabolic. There is no reason why that BUSD LP is lagging. That BUSD, that BUSD LP is lagging because lack of conviction, uh, lack of each one teach one at a broader scale. Cause I know there are plenty of people that put in the work just like I put in the work. Um, you know, like the code never stopped, you know, the math never stopped mathing, you know, and I don't stop pushing out code and updates. Um, it's the minimum as a community is just to get out there and rah, rah, rah. Cause you know, it's, if you haven't noticed the bull run has started, there's going to be tons of competition. You know, there's going to be th tons of things popping off for, 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 for the, for the year. We're still ahead. We're still ahead of Solana. We're still pretty much ahead of everything in the top 10, including Bitcoin. We are still have grown more than them. Believe it or not. Look at the chart. Look at the one year. Three, four, 344%. We are the coin. We're the protocol to be, we're the coin to be. You gotta let people know that. Uh, and the easiest way to get get the word out is through the chart. You every you know once we start going super parabolic, that's when we bring in new participants. Every time we bring in new participants, you know what else we bring in? We bring in new skills. We bring in new networks of people, not just a single person. Networks of people. Each one teach one is important because you can hit. I guess I hate to use the term, but you can hit the equivalent of a super spreader, right? You can hit that person. And when you hit that person, then it's just game on. You know, we, you know, we have, uh, we have a chart, we have the numbers, we have, 
you know, the, via the, commu- the size of the community, we have all those things in our favor. Um, at 30,000 people, you know, we're bigger than most organizations in the world, right? I would consider this a professional organization. We're bigger than many professional organizations in the world. So, um, and we're a financial cooperative, right? So we're all building this thing, growing this thing, you know, and it's going long term. It's at some point, you know, you get what you get. A Model T is a Model T. I consider this to be somewhere between, I mean, you know, this is a a very early iteration that works on a very successful um, EVM chain, L1 EVM chain, you know, and supported by one of the most successful um, businesses in the crypto industry, Binance. That's not going to change. If you haven't noticed, Binance is not going anywhere, right? So BNB chain is definitely not going anywhere. So, um, but I do, as a, when I say as a community, I want you to understand that our community is seven years old. It's not three years old, it's seven years old. It spans multiple protocols started by myself and curated by this ever-growing community. So we've been on Ethereum, we've been on Tron, we're on BNB. And, you know, at some point, God knows where we go next. Um, and BNB on, on sorry, on uh, Tron, the protocol's still running. I haven't touched that protocol in years. It is, it, it, and it runs, and it just does its thing. You know, the keys were revoked (laughs) and it just runs and does its thing. And um, you can expect the same thing, except better with something like Elephant. Um, You know, we'll we'll probably, you know, we'll keep some options open, but things are going to get locked down. Um, I'm pretty... uh, with the way things are going, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good that the current set of governance contracts that are running, the percentages that they're at, all that is good. And so um, we should uh, lock things down, uh, at least, especially from the treasury perspective. So, um, but we, you know, there may be, there, there may be opportunity for uh, another, uh, complimentary product, um, potentially we'll see, but I think for now, um, the NFT, the NFTs are just beautiful. Um, so I think the NFTs just, you know, future proof everything. And I think there's a power in basically saying, this is elephant money. This is what you get. And you can be assured that's what you get. It's not going to change. It's all on chain. It's all on a leading uh, L1 EVM. Uh, and BNB is going to is going to be around. It's not going anywhere. It's already BNB has already been transitioned from uh, the founder to professional management. And it's still one of the largest uh, crypto businesses in the world. That that's just huge. That's just so powerful. Um, and, and and let's 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 peek behind the kimono for a second. Like this crypto market does not inflate and get bigger without Binance getting bigger. And a lot of people don't like that because at the end of the world, at the, at the end of the day, we are, um, unfortunately just the smartest primates in the room. And yeah, 
you know, it's, it's in us. It's in us. All those base instincts are in us. And, you know, so in, in some ways, you know, for all the intellect, humans can't get out of their own way because they're still just really smart mammals, animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I say this as an MIT scientist. I would say this to be true. I'm sorry. You know, you like Teslas. You like your iPhone. You like... You like your pharmaceuticals that control your blood pressure. This is fact. Like we have to be able to get out of our own way. Um, so you know, Binance, Binance is winning. Binance will continue to win because they were there early, right? You know who else is there early? Us. <laughs> we're here early. You know, and as much as people would try to stop us, they can't. <laughs> you know um, when the Netflix special comes out and they find out that and the world finds out that you know a multi-billion dollar business was being swept under the rug by the actual crypto industry which is supposed to be all about freedom ooh that's going to be juicy ooh that's going to be juicy so just keep that in mind too that you're on the right side of history and that um, there's a people, a lot of people out there faking, walking the walk and talking the talk. They're not doing it for real, right? They're just trying to sell their bags. They're just trying to sell um, Bitcoin or whatever. Like they, um, and for us, you know, we have a service like in Futures, where people can never be priced out, where it's just available and where we set a bar for them to reach to so that they are successful, right? That's why it's $200 minimum deposit. You have to set a bar, you have to, set a bar. You have to have standards. You have to say, you need to do at least this on a consistent basis and you will be successful. If you join the herd and you do this, you take this minimum action, you will be successful over time. That's why it's $200 minimum deposit to set a bar for people to reach to because we believe in people. We have standards. That's pretty much all I had. You know, Happy New Year. Um, it's going to be exciting times. Uh, there's a ton of work uh, for me to do. Um, I'm still in the middle of my move. Uh, uh, I'm in the new place now, setting everything else, setting everything else, setting, uh, setting everything up. And, um, you know, uh, I'll be organizing and getting settled through probably uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday, Monday. Uh, but uh, I'm going to start. At the end of every night, I'll probably just dip in and just, I'm just going to be doing UI fixes. You know, there's tons of places that says BUSD everywhere. Obviously, there's nothing BUSD that should be referenced. Nothing is priced in BNB. Oh, sorry, nothing is priced in BUSD. Everything uses Chainlink uh, to get to uh, figure out the price based in based in BNB value. So that should, all those should say USD everywhere. In the in the in the documentation, the, the, the all the documentation and stuff like that, I'm working with um, I'm working with uh, the team that uh, people you know like Crypto Stew, uh, working on the wiki, updating the wiki. Uh, we're gonna update the white paper. Uh, and we will, um, we actually form a team um, to support the, the Dune dashboard. So um, we have a change of a guard there. Uh, we wish Cohen well. Uh, he's a, a Daedalus well. Uh, he put a lot of effort into those Dune dashboards. Uh, and he's... Um, going to take those skills uh, 
and uh, work on some other uh, projects as well, uh, you know, leveraging the skills that he's built up here, which is great. You know, we, 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 we encourage that. So, um, you know, he's, he's got to, always going to have a good reference for me. And I, um, but we have a, a, a whole team now of, 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 of folks that are, that are also good with that type of stuff. Jebediah from Tusker Systems, uh, he has the Microsoft uh, Business Intelligence dashboard for, for Elephant Money. So uh, he's helping lead that up. We have uh, uh, a kid out in South Africa, uh, Monarch. Uh, he's done some con contributions to to the new updates. Um, uh, and of course, we have our own crypto stew as well, uh, helping to coordinate there. So, you know, we appreciate all of those folks and we just, you know, getting more organized. Uh, we already had a team supporting the wiki. So we're just using that same team model to support the, uh, the dash, the dashboard. So, so on the website, we'll be switching over to the, the new set of dashboards soon. We're still working out some things, but we're going to transition to that soon. And once we do that, uh, it'll be very easy for people to come and join the team, contribute and peel off if they have to do something else, you know, no big deal. So that's pretty much all the updates, uh, that I have. If anyone wants to, uh, pop in, ask some questions, uh, let me know. We have just a little bit more time. It's 1143. My time. So we have uh, All Things ETH was the first one to add, uh, to jump in. So we'll let him go first. And uh, Shank Shankar, that you'll be next after All Things ETH. I'm going to um, get your account ready so you can talk. Awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks BT, for the update. Um, you encouraged us all to uh, kind of flash our NFTs in our social media last week. And I put together a thread. Um, including my couple NFTs that I have, and it got a great response. And I just want to encourage everybody on who's listening right now. I, I did post it in the chat uh, in the in the comments below, just so you can kind of take that as, if you want as a template, and just kind of do your thing and share it with you know make your own and share it with the network because uh, it, it got a great response. I uh, got some more people interested, and uh, some DeFi people that are outside of the typical elephant money. Uh, context and that was I just think it's a great way to share um, what's going on a lot of people asking questions about them um, you know there's a lot of people in, into nfts out there that just don't know anything about elephant and uh, the yield that they provide and and uh, utility on nfts is a big deal um, most nfts obviously you know are just pfps or or you know things to trade you know like trading cards or something but the real deal nfts are the unlimited because you get that uh, that unlimited yield as well in, in NFT and an um, elephant token on top of that. So just want to encourage everybody and, uh, and in this new year, uh, be, be prolific, you know, send, send out content as much as possible about uh, elephant and your, and your favorite uh, yield generating uh, uh, applications. Um, and I'll be here posting a lot of stuff. Uh, BT, thanks again uh, last week for also mentioning that the, um, that you'll be giving out NFTs for the Medium article stuff with Cryptozoa. And uh, I look forward to, um, you know, what's up with uh, creating YouTube content as well, what kind of, um, you know, metrics, your KPIs or whatever you want to hit for those in order to grab uh, grab some access to those those NFTs that you uh, bought up with the BUSD treasury. <clears throat> yeah, that that's a good reminder. Yeah, so so the point, the, the point of that, uh, massive uh, NFT mint. We minted 1,800 NFTs during the BUSD, the full BUSD migration. Uh, that's to, for marketing and promotion. And so uh, I think we've sent out just one NFT for maybe the Twitter spaces from that batch, right? So I think that, you know, um, we have the original... I think it's 129 NFTs from the original launch launch of the NFTs that are 
in custody, those are staked. So those 1800 will probably remain unstaked. And yeah, we're going to be using those for rewards for uh, content creators. So um, for now, uh, CryptoZoa's program for Medium, we're just going to continue to use that. And in, in, instead of like having like the, was it 600, 400, 200 uh, 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 monthly prizes, we're just going to give out NFTs to those top contributors. Um, but we're also going to, I think for YouTube especially, um, we're going to try to do something similar uh, on a monthly basis. I think the difference, though, maybe for YouTube is, um, you know, when we come up with that KPI, like, uh, you know, how many views, for example, or how many likes or, for example, base, base, baseline. Um, the, the cool opportunity for YouTube is that if you're a consistent producer, uh, you'll probably just get like a, a NFT every month. Right. And then, you know, maybe we as we get further along, we can do more uh, more exotic uh, st stats and measurements for you to be able to uh, earn even more than one NFT per month. So, you know, it might get to a point where, you know, you could you could earn at least like, you know, between one to uh Two or maybe four NFTs per month. We don't know, uh, but you know it. Um, I think also, and I'm just putting it out there, but uh, I think we have enough talent out there that uh, if we come up with a, a really good strategy, what I really like to do is um, curate some shows. Um, curate some shows and we could actually put them on the main Elephant Money YouTube channel so that we can consolidate some of this effort and basically have regular content, organized content being put out by uh, a set of, of, of content producers that have... Uh, have been have been here and have done work you know sporadically but you know if we get organized and um you know we can create some some we can create some momentum and uh i think people will really show up for that you know uh if we just maybe put in a, put in some more effort uh to get organized now the the, the downside of organization and centralization. So um, uh, I have always, my stance has always been, and, you know, this should be obvious, is my stance is that, you know, uh, a bulk a bulk of the marketing and promotion uh, lies in the hands of the community. And that's one of the pillars that we can stand on in terms of decentralization. Uh, so uh, I very much want this to just, you know, I'm gonna think on it, but I'm just let, I'm just letting you know I'm just letting you into my head and let you know that what I've been thinking about, and um, you know I I think our best content comes out of the community, comes out of people who are vested in the protocol and understand it, um, and uh, every time I try to, <laughs> I'm not gonna go there, but like basically, <laughs> um. The best content comes out of the community. It comes out of investors, holders, whatever you want to call it, uh, participants in the protocol. Um, you, you, th that's that's just the way it goes, you know. Um, you know, the at the end of the day, we know about our own bags better than you know somebody who's, you know. Yeah, well, I'll just leave it at that. So, <laughs> um, uh, so uh, there's going to be tons of opportunities. Uh, th those 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 NFTs are earmarked for community members who want to step up and put up the work in terms of each one teach one and promotion. So, I'll, I'll just keep it simple as that. Um, 
Any other, uh, Shankar, before we get cut off by. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, so definitely, I would say a more recent member of the community, but heavily invested. I have 60% uh, of my assets in, in the ecosystem, and I'm very grateful. Um, definitely lots of good content creators out there. Chris Farrell brought me into this world, and then I learned a lot from uh, Ged uh, with the red uh, emoji here, and then SK, Crypto K, Crypto Stew. And uh, my main platform is uh, LinkedIn. Uh, so definitely I, I will produce a platform appropriate content there. I started a newsletter called the Crypto Sage and um, it's going to be very friendly to novices. Um, and I do consider myself a, a DeFi novice. So I have somewhat of a DeFi novice question probably, but nonetheless a very important one. Um, I'm very interested in continuity planning. Um, so what happens if a bank teller decides to uh, take a SpaceX rocket to the moon and never come back? Um, uh, what happens then? That is a very important question that goes on in my mind. If you could help me with that, uh, bank teller. Thank you. Yeah, that's funny. Um, that's, that's the whole point. Um, so we're gearing up for that. I, I talk about business continuity all the time, uh, part of locking down these contracts, you know, de-risking the platform, uh, re re removing things that require any engineering whatsoever. Uh, basically, uh, we got, we got rid of support for BTCB. We got rid of support for USDC, uh, all the things, all of the, the farms, those are closed because we don't know what, those are those are pegged those are pegged assets those are pegged assets to assets that might not be here even five years from now forget about me you know I got kids to raise they're not even in college yet you know I plan to be here a long time um, I'm not going anywhere this is this is my um, not to say I wouldn't code something else somewhere else <laughs> I keep saying I'm not going to and I'm like eh, eh, you know so uh, I think, you know, I think as, as, as long as I can my, I put my fingers on a keyboard, I'm probably going to get inspired to do something. But, um, uh, in terms of business continuity planning, we have the Elephant Foundation, um, and the Elephant Foundation will be handling things like the website, coordination of all the things that I've ever, ever coordinated. <laughs> um, you know, all those things can be done by, uh, other people. Um, the benefits to how we've done it here is that, you know, I've been a professional operator. I have managed teams, um, but I also have done, I've never asked anybody to do anything that I couldn't do myself. Um, maybe other people can do it better, but I can still do it myself. So, um, and that has, the result of that has been tremendous cost savings. A lot of times uh, you look at protocols and you wonder who's doing all the dumping and you see, oh, like in the case of XRP, uh, tremendous marketing, tremendous exposure, um, you know, tremendous brick and mortar buildings, orgs that all cause a sucking sound, which is why XRP is where XRP is. And they could be much bigger, right? And you look at like how much value, you know, has gone into just operations and, 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 and maintenance of a thing that probably doesn't have a lot to show for it. You know, if you like, I'm not, I'm not trying to dog. I know there's some XRP fans out there, but I'm just giving it as an example as XRP stands out as a very, uh, as, as the shining example of, you know, their business model is dumping on holders heads. Right. So the benefit is that they have a global, base of holders right you know xrp came out at a time where there wasn't a lot of things you know where, where xrp came out of time where it was competing against like colored coins um things that were just like you know bitcoin black you know bitcoin red i don't know it's crazy stuff uh so anyway um but but we'll have a found we'll have a foundation it's going to be uh the funding is going to come through the performance fund. So when I say foundation, again, don't think 
tremendously large. That's you know what we're going to be able to do with that performance. Uh, sorry, with the f- foundation is going to scale based on the growth of elephant money. So you know, um, the first the first people that will probably uh, join uh, that foundation will um, just be focused on operations. And uh, in that regard, uh, we may f- uh, form a long-term partnership with, uh, you know, a consulting agency. Uh, you know, there, there are consulting agencies that have been around for a very long time, and we can create a long-term contract and employ them to, to manage some of the technical stuff uh, on a long-term basis. Uh, and we already have the infrastructure in place to handle, you know, financing those operations. Currently they flow through me, but they get flow through a bonded operator, you know, at, uh, Ernst and Young or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. So there's, there's, there's a lot of, uh, options, uh, in, and, um, you know, I have the experience through, you know, State Street Fidelity, my, my institutional background, to know that, you know, we can bring on, um, you know, both technical and long-term technical and consulting partners to, so that we have uh, business continuity. Uh, we could even, um, we can even uh, uh, form a trust and have that trust managed as well, um, along with the, the operating components. So it's not, uh, but, but from in, ter- in terms of what the bank actually is in, from your perspective, um, everything's running on chain. Uh, the UI 